Hey friend, this is Ian Khan. I hope you're doing well. The global pandemic is happening. It's, it's here uh, and it's really changing the way we live and we do everyday things. This week we have many other cities and many other countries that have uh, created new lockdowns, cities are being shut down, uh, and it's really, really frustrating. One of the aspects of uh, the COVID-19 that's emerging right now is the emergence of the vaccination passports. And I know this is a hot debate right now, and I just wanted to provide some clarity and some more information on this topic because a lot of people have been asking questions about what it really means. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, uh, which I believe we need to figure out and clarify. Now, first of all, vaccination tracking information, tracking information about what shots you've received, it's not new. It's been out there for decades and decades. Uh, did you know that immigrants who come to the United States need to show proof of immunization against certain diseases? Uh, many countries have, um, have, uh, have laws and regulations of immunization records to be provided. And uh, it's a form of booklet. It's a printed booklet. It's available freely on, uh, on the internet to be viewed and to, see, to be seen. But vaccine tracking has been there forever. So if you're uh, really uh, raising um, uh, kind of concerns around uh, your, your privacy is being overtaken and you're, you're being watched, uh, I, th I think that uh, that um, is laid to rest right here. Uh, I also want to address another thing that if we use vaccine tracking information, will uh, someone, will the government or will some certain authorities or bodies always know where you are? Well, that is a separate thing. It's something completely different from tracking your vaccination history. Now, if you're a person who's taken a vaccination, uh, recording that and, and putting it into a record of some kind uh, is, um, is, is not new again. If you're part of a developed country and you have a healthcare system, then all your healthcare information already resides in some kind of a healthcare um, uh, directory or healthcare database, whether it's your municipal database, your uh, hospital database, your uh, country national level database, uh, there's nothing new in that. In uh, Canada, you have a centralized healthcare system, uh, you have a provincial healthcare system, and so your healthcare uh, card number, your name, your age, everything that's happened with you, it's, it's captured. Uh, similarly, in other countries, uh, this information is already captured. Now, what does the government do with that? Does the government go and track you every single day? Uh, no, they don't. But is this information um, a record that is important and that can uh, potentially be life-saving for you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the technology. Today, uh, some countries have come out with a COVID-19 vaccine tracker as a printed document. Iceland started this some time ago. There's other countries who are doing it. Uh, but there are some that have moved on and created a digital application. It's an app on your phone and it tracks your vaccination status. Uh, as of right now, it, it tells you what vaccines have you taken, when did you take them, and so on and so forth. Now, if we really want the global economy to open up, there's different ways to do that. Uh, one way would be to uh, vaccinate everybody. And for that, we would probably want to know who has been vaccinated and who has not been vaccinated. Um, another way could be to do nothing and just wait for the pandemic to go away. Uh, and uh, the third way probably would be to uh, just not wait for anything, just travel. Just travel, whether you are COVID-19 uh, positive or not, whether you're afraid or not of being infected, uh, that's the third option, which doesn't make sense. In order for us to sustainably and successfully open the global economy, and I'm talking about business travel, business trade and commerce that's been shut down. I'm also talking about the local economies, for example, uh, events and conferences. I'm talking about concerts and other types of gatherings that are not taking place because of the pandemic. Then we need to figure out a way to ensure that people who are attending these events, people who are traveling, people are, who are going from one place to the other are secure and safe, have been vaccinated so that other people who are traveling with them or attending these events or congregating with them feel safe. We have to make sure that it's a safe environment that's created in order for us to stop the spread of COVID-19. 
I know there's many people today who actually do not even believe that COVID-19 exists. Uh, there are many people who uh, do not wear masks. There are many people who do not want to take a vaccine. And there's many conspiracy theories that have come out from, um, from uh, the government using uh, microchips uh, in, in vaccinations and so on. Uh, it's, I, I really uh, don't know what to say. Uh, the reality is in front of us. We have millions of people who are around the world have been infected, who have died because of the complications of, of COVID-19. And we need to figure out how to get out of this and how to get back to a new normal. We're not in a new normal right now. We're just passing through a phase of, 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 of trying to figure out the normal. So we're not in a new normal at all. So in terms of going back to the options of uh, the type of tracker you could have, there's the paper-based tracker and many, uh, uh, in many cases, fraudulent printed certificates have been found on travelers who are traveling in different countries. And so that's the big challenge with uh, a printed document that, uh, that, that can be used as a tracking document. Who, if many people can just fake those documents. I don't think you would want anybody with a COVID-19 a positive status and who can transmit uh, the virus to others to be close to you, to come in contact with you, right? Uh, and so that's the challenge with the printed documents. Now, technology can help. Technologies that, um, such as blockchain technology, which can capture information, store information in a very secure way, can definitely help. Blockchain technology is relatively new in terms of uh, the lifespan of technologies. Uh, it's about 10 years old, but it hasn't been fully uh, used to its maximum extent. Uh, it's the same technology that powers cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin uh, and others. Uh, to keep it really simple, blockchain technology is able to just track your vaccination status without revealing any other information about you, without uh, revealing where you are, what your, what your location is, what your name is, uh, what your age is, or what, what's your family status. It can hide all of that information. And the best part is blockchain technology cannot be hacked. I know many hacks have taken place over uh, the, the last few years. It's a big concern about your private and personal information being stolen and getting in the hands of um, the bad guys. But blockchain is really, really absolutely secure because it works on something called cryptography, which is impossible to hack. And so there are some options that we can use in order to track our vaccination status without giving away our privacy and we have to come together uh, as a community as technologists as as leaders as people uh, in order to figure out what to do and how to do it best there's a lot of misinformation out there misinformation that misguides people that stops lawmakers from making the best decision that's stopping people from going on about their lives Please do not pay attention to any of that and do your own due diligence. Go and read a book, go and read the news, go and read uh, some, some technical um, document that helps you understand what are the options and how can we best do this. As a technology futurist, I work with technology every single day. This is my career. This is my life. This is what I do for clients. This is what we do. And I can uh, guarantee that there are options of tracking information without being tracked. There's, there's ways of proving uh, certain things, your vaccination status, without giving away your other information. And we have to talk and discuss about what those solutions are. Uh, I know some big tech companies have, um, have squandered the trust that we placed in them. Companies like Facebook and Google uh, always come under uh, the crossfire because of their uh, practices, because of uh, how they uh, treat data. And it's not just these companies, but many others as to how they treat personal data and, and private information of people. Well, I guess big tech has a bit of catch up to do. And I'm not saying that we should give all our information to big tech and, 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 and keep our eyes shut and just, just tell them, hey, here's all my personal and private information. We absolutely shouldn't do that. Uh, we need to come together as a community and talk about the solutions that can help us open the world. I know today a consortium has been formed between different technology companies that want to provide a direction and guidance as to what the COVID-19 vaccine 
um, the passport should do and how it should do it. Um, there's other private companies that have come together. For example, the uh, IATA, which is the International Association of, of, uh, of Travel, uh, they've come out and they've launched a COVID-19 vaccine tracker uh, and it's being rolled out in Singapore right now. The city of New York uh, has a tracking app and they're doing it in uh, conjunction with IBM and it's in a pilot phase. They're trying to figure out whether it'll work or not. Uh, and between all of this that's happening, there are many critics who will criticize everything that's happening. And there are also people who are actually working really, really hard to, uh, to create solutions and provide a way for all of us to be safer again. Uh, my only request, is please do not pay attention to news that distracts you, to events that distract you, and do your own due diligence. Uh, read upon what you're, what you're talking about, what you're hearing, and make your own informed decision. If you're, uh, if, if you're still considering the fact that COVID-19 is, is not a pandemic, then please go and see what's happening out there in the world. Uh, what are the reasons for it? We don't know the reasons. There could be so many, but we have a responsibility and a moral obligation to stand up, uh, do our due diligence, uh, investigate the truth on our own and not rely on other sources. So anything that I've said today, you sh absolutely should not trust me on it. I want you to go out and do your own homework and figure out what all these things are and how they can create impact or not create impact. And what's the best way to come out of this pandemic as winners, as a global community, because now we all are in it together. It's not just about one country or one region or one city. We all uh, across the world have been joined together by COVID-19 and uh, we've got to fight it together. Take care and I wish you and your family a safe passage through the pandemic. Be strong. My best wishes are with you.